Today we're talking to Boris Komei, an associate professor with the School of Physics. You might have had Boris for first year thermal physics, second year electromagnetism, or as the associate head of education. Boris is currently working on the Starshot project, aiming to send a spacecraft to Alpha Centauri through the use of laser powered sails. Boris, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. All right, first question, what is your hot beverage of choice? Well, if you had caught me a bit later in the year, it would have been a double ristretto. But um, during winter, I really enjoy drinking, uh, sipping all day a hot beverage. And so then I drink uh, filtered uh, brewed coffee. So where are you from and how did you end up at the University of Sydney? Huh. Um, well, I grew up in France and in Germany, and so I did my undergrad in France as well. And in my third year of physics studies, I was offered a scholarship to do a research project over the summer uh, anywhere I wanted in the world. And so I figured, well, I may as well go as far as possible and take full advantage of that scholarship. And so I looked at the map and Australia seemed pretty far away. So I found a random research group in Australia that would do some physics that would be suitable. And, and to be honest, I really came for as a tourist rather than to do physics at the University of Sydney. Then I went, so I was for three months in Australia, did my research project there. It went quite well. I was quite happy. I did it uh, actually with, uh, partly with Martin de Sturck at the time. And then I came back to France and did my master's. And I thought, you know, Australia was a one time thing. But um, then when I did my master's degree, I, the research project in my master's really didn't go that well. In fact, it was quite bad. It was the, the, my supervisor was never there. It was all very, very poorly done. And so I had a very fond memory of working with uh, Ross McFedrin and Martin de Sturck in uh, Sydney. And I thought, well, for my PhD, I'd rather be in a group that actually looks after me. So I decided to do my PhD. Uh, back in Sydney in partnership with um, the University of Marseille in France. So I was going back and forth between France and Australia for that. I really enjoyed doing my PhD there. So after my PhD, I found a job here and I've been here ever since. Uh, more about your research. How would you describe your research to someone who has never studied physics? Well, I'm working on sending, um, as part of a la very large collaboration, uh, sending a, a probe to the nearest star to explore the planets over um, and the way we do that is by using a very light sail that we bombard with the very powerful laser that pushes the sail uh, to very large um, velocities to about 0.2 of the speed of light. Um, but there's many issues with that. There's an enormous amount of issues. And so the issue I specifically work on is how to keep the sail inside the laser beam. Imagine um, trying to push, say, a balloon with uh, blowing on it. Well, the balloon will try to get out of your um, uh, out of the wind, right? It goes right and left. It will be pushed laterally, and then it's no longer in the wind, and it will no longer be pushed forwards. Same with a cell. You put it in the laser beam, it'll want to escape the laser beam, and then you won't be able to propel it anymore. So I'm working on stabilizing the cell inside the laser beam. Wow, that sounds like a stuff from sci-fi. That's so awesome. That <laughs> it totally is, and that's why I love it. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing. Um, speaking of which, Boris, you're you started up the Coffee Break program. So what encouraged you to start it? I was just freshly appointed uh, associate head of education. And in my mind, that means that I'm responsible for the success of all students in physics. And we were starting the semester in full lockdown. Um, and uh, my fear was, and still is for that matter, that students um, lose motivation, lose engagement. I figured, well, I was trying to find as many ways as possible to keep students engaged and, 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 and passionate about physics and motivated to continue with their studies. Um, and one thing I figured is if, uh, if you develop more of an emotional attachment or some connection, at least, um, to, to the teaching staff, you are much more likely to keep engaged. And one thing that we're really lacking with the online mode is those casual conversation before class, after class, and over coffee breaks, and so on. Um, so I figured that one way to reintroduce some kind of connection would be by having some of those little interviews. And so I was really keen on having students do the interviews. It means a lot to know that we are supported by such a passionate and um, experienced researcher and teacher. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> what is the best part of your job? 
The main reason I love my job so much is because I get to learn new things every day. Um, and I, I love acquiring new knowledge and I love reading um, new knowledge, well, or past knowledge for that matter, uh, equally as much is the interaction with students. Um, uh, and uh, I, I love teaching. I love finding the best possible way uh, to, well, the challenge of finding, finding the best possible way to uh, convey uh, information and, 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 um, and physics. Perhaps what I love the most in uh, my entire job are first year tutorials, where I get to actually interact with small groups of students. It's amazing to see so, such bright young people. Um, I just, that's really a privilege of my job. I saw that you've got a few guitars at the back. Do you have any hobbies or hidden talents? Well, um, hobbies, I have a lot. Talents, I have few. So I do I do have, you know, I've got keyboards and drum machines and, and guitars and, and I, I love to play all of these things. But the reality is that um, I don't know how to use them. I'm terrible at them. You know, I can play a few chords. I, it's, it's just really bad. So I am having a lot of fun with them uh, and I play it a lot, but it's just uh, the, the outcome is, is terrible. Uh, but I, I have other um, hobbies as well. I, I like uh, woodworking, I like cooking, I like uh, doing electronics projects. Um, sometimes I'm into photography. Recently I'm into kayak. Uh, yeah, lots of hobbies, um, jack of many trades and master of none. <laughs> No, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you were very, very talented in a lot of Oh, things. no, <laughs> you haven't heard my music. <laughs> What's a mistake you made early on in your career and what did you learn from it? When I was a um, young researcher and I was only teaching uh, a little bit, so I was teaching into the honours degree at the time, um, one of our students was um, having medical issues and um, had special considerations um, frequently um, and at the time I was uh, very uh, naive and I did not see that I thought I thought they were being lazy to be completely honest um, and I deeply deeply regret that um, I learned since uh, through life that um, <laughs> you know sickness is something very very real in fact I've been I've been uh, sick for 10 years myself where I could only work part-time and in fact I think it was a, a very similar disease to what that student had and it's it's just something you know you you have to accept that everyone is different and everyone has different capacities and um, and accommodate them. Um, the potential in everyone is huge and being uh, slowed down or hindered by such small things as one deadline, uh, because that day you're sick or something like that is something that is really just unfair. So that is a mistake I made early on. Um, I certainly don't admit it since and I've had regret ever since. What's the biggest misconception people have about your job? Because I think there would be um there, there, there's two i would say the first one is that we have holidays between semesters that's just not true <laughs> uh, we work just as hard between semesters we have courses to prepare we have our research to do somehow as well um no, it's, it's just as intense um the other misconception is that because we are say um well doctor or i should say professor or professor in physics that we know all of physics and that is just not true as well. In fact, the, the more we know physics, the more we realize how little we know. Um, and that's, I think that's the thing with everything. The more you know, the more you know how little you know. Finally, with your experience in physics, what piece of advice do you wish you knew going into university? The first thing I wish I had known when I came into university um, is that it's okay to be different. Um, we all different and the more different we are, the better we are in many ways, because if everyone was the same we would have a very monolithic and boring society. Um, I was very much a closeted gay man in my early undergrad and that was extremely detrimental to my studies. I wish I had known at the time it was okay to be okay to be gay, <laughs> okay to be different anyway. Um, and that if you can't accept who you are early on it, it really does put a weight uh, that will hinder you in everything so accept who you are um, be, be proud to be different um, whatever your difference may be be proud um, the second one is kind of linked to the first one and that's more a physics thing is that we all learn in very different ways 
um, but we all can learn physics. Um, physics is, is some people have this notion that you are either talented on physics or you're not talented. And same with math for that matter. And yeah, perhaps some people are a bit more logically minded than others. But in my experience, after now teaching for a while, it's, it's just not true that it's talent. It's, it's passion and it's the work that you put in. The more passionate you are, the more likely you are to work, put work into studying physics and becoming good at it. Um, but a lot of people arrive in, in uh, first year physics and realize how hard physics is and then they give up. They give up because they think, oh, I'm not talented enough. That's bullshit. You, you, everyone who, who is good enough to get into university in first year is good enough to understand and practice physics. It just requires some work. It requires a lot of work and you need to have enough passion to do it but everyone can do it. Um, and we all learn in different ways. And you know, you will resonate with different approaches. Some people resonate really well with tutorials. Some people don't. Some people resonate really well with live lectures. Some people prefer to watch the lectures uh, recordings later at slow or accelerated speed. Some people never show up in lectures and learn entirely from the textbook. And all that is fine. You know, find the way that works for you. Everyone is different, but everyone can do it. What a way to end this interview. Thank you, Boris, for your time. You are welcome. My pleasure.